So um, now let us look at some examples. Uh, but first, before we proceed with examples, uh, let me elaborate a little bit uh, on the solution, right, of a um, system of, of ordinary differential equations, linear system in, in case um, when the, the the matrix has complex eigenvalues. So f first of all, may maybe in, in order to understand it, uh, if, if if we only have two equations, right, uh, then how do we know if the eigenvalues are complex or real? Um, it's, it's very simple. So eigenvalues are uh, roots of the characteristic polynomial, and the ca characteristic polynomial uh, it, it has th th this this form: it is r square minus trace a times r plus determinant a. Right. So that that's the characteristic polynomial. So minus trace is the coefficient at r. And determinant is the coefficient at, sorry, uh, yeah, um, is the constant term, right? So th this is because um, eigenvalues denoted by r1 plus r2 and r2, so the their sum is the trace uh, of a, and their product r1 times r2 is the determinant of a. And since th this is a characteristic polynomial, its discriminant tells us uh, whether eigenvalues are real or complex, right? And its discriminant is trace a squared minus 4 times determinant a. So this is the discriminant um, um, of the um, characteristic polynomial. So th this is how we can, uh, ah, sorry, minus 4 determinant. Yeah, I. Uh, yeah, correct. Yeah. So um, then, in that case, if the the case that we have complex eigenvalues, then of course that there are just two of them and uh, n nothing else. So there are j they're just a plus sorry r plus i mu and r minus i mu, and then we can figure out the complex solution. And then by taking its real part and its imaginary part, that that's what it is. So that's its real part and its imaginary part. And then uh, from from here we're going to apply the, the, this formula to look at specific examples. All right. So here, here is my first specific example. Um, all right. So th these are eigenvalues and eigenvectors. Uh, what do we have here? Um, right. So R. This is our. Uh, R, this is my mu, is the imaginary part. Now, uh, A is the uh, real part um, of the complex uh, of the complex v complex valued eigenvector, and B is the imaginary part of the complex valued eigenvector. And so now we are looking at the first pair. So the, the second pair is is going to be a bit different, of course, but. Uh, Anyway, so now it gives us two linearly independent solutions. Well, according to the formula that we just saw in the previous slide, and therefore we can figure out the general solution uh, by taking an arbitrary linear combination of the, these complex valued solutions. And so notice that uh, what we have here is e to the t. So e to the t. Uh, so if t approaches infinity. So imagine that if t approaches infinity, e to the t also approaches infinity. And then, if t approaches infinity, then uh, cosine and sine are going to do oscillations. So in, in other words, in, in this case, both uh, x and y, or x1 and x2, are going to do oscillations of a magnitude that is increasing exponentially as time goes by. And th th this is what we see here. So th this is a familiar looking graph. So this is just x1 of t versus t. Um, we, we, we could plot x2 of t versus t. It, it would be very similar. Uh, but now note that uh, at the same time, it makes sense in, in terms of the phase portrait. So le let me explain what I mean. Um, so 
the deface portrait is, is plotted on the axis uh, x1 x2 so now imagine that uh, we, we, are, we are starting somewhere here right suppose then right so now uh, we are following this trajectory so now x1 is increasing stop now x1 reached its local maximum and now it is decreasing 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 and now it's reached the local minimum and now it starts increasing and then it starts decreasing and so on so th th this is how we can see um, oscillations of increasing magnitude on the phase plane so on the um, when we just look at the trajectory of this, the system so this is the trajectory and this is the phase plane and the 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 uh, the, the, the plane uh, x1 versus t is the well it's not the whole configuration space it's just a part of the configuration space but th this is a solution so uh, i mean of course when we look at the solution it's uh, it's easier to see oscillations directly so but on the face plane it, well it's not very hard to see oscillations either Okay, so let, let's do the, the second example, um, very similar, right? So now uh, we can, uh, now I'm not going to write the, the second eigenvector. So if th th this is the first eigen, uh, um, uh, eigenvalue and eigenvector, then you know that the, the second one is going to be R2 equals the same real part minus uh, the imaginary part. And then the, the, the second, uh, eigenvector is going to be uh, well real numbers are going to be the, the real parts are the same imaginary parts are going to be the minus the, them themselves right uh, but we don't really need that so let's just look at the, the pure um, pure numbers so that's our r that's our mu well this is our real part uh, this is our imaginary part this is how we get a and b so now putting everything together, we get two linearly independent solutions. And then combining them uh, into one formula, we get a general solution of the, um, uh, the, the system of differential equations. So notice that now if t approaches infinity, this part approaches zero, this uh, is doing oscillations. So, which means that the whole thing is going to look like decaying oscillations. And th this is what we see, uh, actually. So, the trajectory here, uh, sorry, the, the solution on the plane uh, Tx1 uh, is something familiar. So, these are our decaying oscillations, oscillations of uh, decreasing um, magnitude. But uh, we, we can also see it on the phase plane too, right? So on the phase plane x1, x2, we can kind of see c2. See, see so imagine that I know we are uh, looking, uh, say, we're going along this trajectory. So x is increasing. Oops, stop. Now it's decreasing. Now it's increasing again, then decreasing and so on. So then um, they, they're going to converge to zero very quickly, but it's still uh, Every trajectory is doing infinitely many time and infinitely many rounds around zero uh, while um, it is approaching zero. Okay, and um, here we have the third example. And again, I in the same way, uh, so this is our R. So no notice that there is no real part, the real uh, real um, part of R one is, is zero. Uh, our eigenvector xi, so it has a real part and it has imaginary part. So the real part of R is zero. So then by putting everything together, we again uh, get two linearly independent solutions. And then when we uh, combine them into one formula, we get the general solution. The important thing is that there is no exponential part, right? Because it is e to the power zero t, which is just one. And this whole thing is of course just oscillating. which means that um, every solution, so 
every x1 and every x2 it, it does this so it just oscillates well but then uh, the, the interesting thing uh, is, is what happens at, at the phase plane right so in the phase plane of course the, the, this means that um, if this is x1 this is x2 oscillations mean that uh, trajectories of, of the, the system are going to be um, just some closed curves that um, encircle zero yeah, so, so like, like here so imagine that that, that we start somewhere here uh, now x1 is increasing stop x1 is decreasing x1 stop now x1 is uh, increasing again stop now decreasing increase de decreasing increasing decrease and so on right? and this is exactly the um, oscillating behavior on uh, th that that we see on the trajectory well th this is x2 but um, x x1 behaves in in the same way all right uh now what we saw in in, in these examples is that uh if the um a real part of the uh, two eigenvalues so the two eigenvalues are complex conjugates so they have the, the same real part so if that real part is positive then trajectories are spirals that uh, tend to go away from the origin um, if it's negative then they converge to the origin but they're spiral still and if the real part is exactly zero then trajectories are ellipses that just encircle the origin right well, uh, the, the magnitude of the, this R, so if it's um, a large number or if it's a small number, so positivity and, neg and negativity, it has to do with whether they uh, converge towards the origin or drift away from the origin. But the, the magnitude, the absolute value, it has to do with how fast that they do it. Well, um, and the, the magnitude of the imaginary part, it has to do with how fast uh, trajectories they, they go around the origin. Um, well, um, the, the the real part of the eigen of vector and the imaginary part of the eigen vector they kind of have have to do with uh, skewness of the the of the picture. So in other words, whether uh, with the fact that trajectories are like this, or I don't know, just like this, or if these spirals spirals they they can be like this, or it can be like this. So. Um, a little bit of challenge for you. So, if we want to sketch the phase portrait, how do we figure out if trajectories uh, go clockwise or counterclockwise? And in the case of ellipses, for spirals it is a bit more difficult. But in case of ellipses, can we figure out how to sketch the phase portrait without solving the system fully, right? And here is a little quiz for you.